the Joe Rogan experience. And to feel that energy of, of people wanting you to succeed, wanting you to do good. Wow. You know, people that were there for, for the ride back at the Ice House, you know, 20 some odd years ago. Look at all those and people. And so, yeah. <clears throat> that, that is insane. That's insane. <laughs> it was it was a beautiful moment. I was choked up in the first 30 seconds walking out there because wow. they just kept cheering like like, you know, and then I said, we did it. And uh, it was just it was over after that. So it was a big emotional, you know, show for me. Um, on Netflix, it was an hour and f almost two hours. But the actual night I was on stage for over three. Wow. And they could not get me off that stage. Because then I broke, <laughs> broke out a bottle of tequila, and then we tur <laughs> it, I turned it into a big quinceanera is what I did at the end. <laughs> and uh, I got fined by Dodger Stadium for going over the time. That's it, hilarious. You know, if you run the light of the club, it's, ah, all right, come on, maybe you mess up. How much did they fine you? Well, you don't have to say. I, it was over 100. Oh, Jesus Christ, yeah. Dodger Stadium. Come on, guys. Stop being you know. cunts. Is that like operating costs? Like, what is that? Well, you got to figure all the costs that go into like, you know, the uh, right. the union, the, mm -hmm. the staff. I mean, there's yeah. so many people that work there. Had to be there. worth it, though. Yes. Had, had to be worth oh, it. I do it all over yeah, again. It was, it was the greatest <laughs> night of my life, and so happy to pay the fine. That's amazing. That's what, when I saw Bill Burr do uh, Fenway Park. A similar sort of situation, you know, like holy shit, yeah. and man. to do it in your hometown, yeah, you know, that's exactly. the best part. Well, I, I think it's always harder to get love at home, mm. you know, that's why you go out on the road and you do your thing. And I, I think that getting that love at home, like I, I never got to perform at a comedy club at home until I became successful on the road. Mm. I didn't get the laugh factories or the comedy stores or the improvs until what? I went out and did that. Doesn't make sense though. Why, why would that be true? Were you hanging around? You got to figure 20 some odd years ago, um, you know, maybe they had a Latino night. You know, it, it, you had to really know somebody. Somebody had to really vouch for you or you, you just it, it was weird. I, most of my shows were at bars. So what year did you start? I uh, started in 97. 97. So most of those years you're hopping around doing bars. One nighters doing and one stuff nighters. like that. Oh, so and so has a room. So and so has a room. You know, blah, blah, Joey blah. Joey Diaz took me to a lot of those places. Oh, yeah. Joey Diaz would tell you, come on, motherfucker, you want to go to the real place? He would take you to some <laughs> Chinese restaurant in the middle of nowhere. It's run by Mexican people. It was amazing. Joey would take you. You want to see where Escobar would spend his weekends? <laughs> he would go to all these fucking crazy shows, but he had a philosophy behind it. He was like, you know, I want to go everywhere. I want to go everywhere. I want to get in front of these fucking momos. I want to go down to the east side and rock those motherfuckers. He was just like, he wanted to do all kinds of different shows, like just to like feel it out, you know? And I think he's right. They're like those dingy bar shows. There's something about those shows that teach it a little extra, it's, a different it's muscle. It's humbling. Yeah. But the cool part was is that I was used to performing in places like that before I actually got an audience that was willing to just be quiet and listen. Yes. So I felt like, oh, wow, that was hard, you know, because <laughs> you have to come out the gate swinging mm -hmm. to get people in a bar, people that are focused on the game, focused on trying to hook up, having yeah. a drink, trying to wait, you know, waiting for somebody. There's all kinds of different things happening. And so the fact that, you know, to be able to go out there and get their attention. Yeah. You know, that 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 was like a, a like it was school. Yeah, it, was it is school. school. It is school. It's a school that no one is going to give you a lesson plan. You got to kind of do it all yourself, and you got to learn from the other people that are doing it, like Joey. But it's like I did the same thing in Boston. We d mostly we got road gigs because those are the ones that you know they would pay you to drive two hours and mm -hmm. do some, you know, forty minutes in front of a bunch of crazy people. And, and you were excited to do oh it. Oh my God! Yeah, it was amazing. It just the, the fact that you were making money doing comedy was amazing, and you're learning how to do it. You're learning how to do it the hard way. And restaurants and bars and pubs and just weird, yeah, weird was, little outdoor venues. and There was no social media back then, no YouTube, no, no TikTok nothing. video clips, no nothing no. that you could post. You just had to go out and... But honestly, you know. that's great because that, that gave you this chance to, first of all, know you really wanted it. Because if you were gonna, really going to grind it out every night, going to all these weird shitty places for no money for years, for years you're not making any money. Like you got to be committed to that because a lot of people, they got half one foot in, one foot out. They have one good set and they're like, you yeah, know, maybe I'll give comedy a try. But guys like you and guys like me, we're out there every fucking night, every uh, night. I knew that with time, money would come as long as I, I stuck it out. You know, I, I was in a very cush position when I started doing stand up. Ah. So it was it was a little, you know, challenging to say goodbye to security. Yeah. You know, I had I had a great gig selling cell phones. I was making about 5k a month, mm. you know, and in 1997, 
you know, working yeah. in sales, making that. I, I've never had insurance. I had, uh, you know, a nice little PPO plan. Couldn't you work there during Brand the day? I did. For how long? I did. I lasted about a year because I found out that <clears throat> I couldn't just do my job and then go do shows at night and then go home. You couldn't go home. You had to stay out. We had to wind up at a Denny's. You had to wind up at some freaking taco shop or whatever at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning right. talking to other comics because that was the only other way you were going to find out about another show. Yeah. You couldn't send a tweet. You couldn't send a text because you, you didn't have that as an option. You had to talk to people. And, right. Hey, so-and-so has a room. Oh, really? What's a, Okay, give me that number. And you had to learn to write numbers and save numbers and information and learn how to follow up. Hey, mm. what do you think about, you know, and then, yeah, yeah, uh, can you vouch for me? That meant a lot back then. Yes. Someone calling on your behalf, hey, so-and-so's got a tight 10. Yeah, it's huge. You know? That's huge. So staying out late at night, uh, coming home at 4 or 5 in the morning, and then having to be up at 7 to go do my 9 to 5, it, fortunately, I was young, and I was able to hang for about a year, and then I just couldn't. Mm. I was falling asleep at work, and I got caught. <laughs> I got caught. <laughs> You know, I was working inside of a little uh, kiosk selling cell phones. And one time I just kind of let me do some inventory here on the floor. And then I guess I was snoring and somebody caught me. Oh, my God. And I'm like, oh. Oh, my God. That's a beautiful story, though. But yeah. That's, that's an American dream. Story. And I thought that because I had done a couple of um, television shows and I saw the money that I could make doing stand up at that time, I said, oh, well, and then you start doing the, the math. The, the the delusional math. Well, if I get one of these a month and I do this and this and this, <laughs> I only need this much to pay my rent, this much to pay my car note. I'll be I'm gonna be fine. And I quit my day job and I got um, evicted from my apartment because I ran out of money so fast. Um, they came after my car. The repo guy was looking for the car. I got evicted. I went to go uh, sleep on my uh, sister's couch. It was it was wow. one of those. 